Hi, uh, yes, I know that our set does look a little bit different today. Like many companies throughout the world, Rumber Labs has taken several precautionary measures to protect staff during the coronavirus crisis. Now, for us, that involves, among other things, working from home for those employees who can. So thanks to my very patient family for letting me convert our living room here into a studio. Uh, despite everything, our production is still producing, our analytical labs are still analyzing, and our number crunchers are still crunching. And they're still serving up the data and the facts that we need to create the Mycotoxin Minute. Now, you've heard us talk about molds that can produce different mycotoxins. One example of this is Fusarium graminearum. Now, this busy little guy can not only create dioxin of alanol, but also 3-acetyl-dioxinavalanol, diacetoxyscurpinol, and these other nasty compounds. But did you know that this can also work in the other direction? Now, what do I mean by that? Simply that different microorganisms are in fact able to produce the same compound, in this case the same mycotoxin. Take nivalanol. Now this mycotoxin can be a metabolite of several different Fusarium species, Graminiarum and Colmorum, which are the main culprits of head blight disease. Now, how is it that these different species can create the same metabolite? Our best explanation is that it comes down to simple genetics. A section of DNA that these Fusarium species share is known as the tri-cluster. Its presence correlates to the production of nivalanol and its derivatives, such as Fusarinon X, also called 4-acetyl-nivalanol. But as, as is so often the case with molds, environment is also a determining factor. This is why we say that the tri-cluster merely correlates to the tendency to produce these mycotoxins. So, is it nature or nurture? In this case, it's both. That's all for today. We'll see you soon, and take care out there.